I exist. My voice will not be silenced. Freedom, liberation, celebration and remembrance, the truth, courage, death and rebirth, the individual and the collective, metamorphosis and transformation, resistance in the face of extreme repression, reclaiming public space. These are some of the themes that Art War deals with and that the artists that we have the honor to spend the next hour and a half with are inspired by and grapple with. Art War illustrates the unbroken connection of artistic expression from ancient Egyptian times to the current moments of revolutionary upheaval that Egyptians have been living through. Artists continue these traditions of wall art and music with the explosion of street art and graffiti and song and dance that took over Egypt after the 2011 uprisings, ending 30 years of the oppressive Mubarak regime. Young revolutionaries and artists use walls as the revolution's newspaper, as a way to convey the truth in an upside down world where the media is the mouthpiece of the regime. Four years after the uprisings that toppled Mubarak through the repressive and murderous military transition government to the Morsi and the Muslim Brotherhood's disastrous attempt to get in bed with the military and use their power to forward their political project to the current Sisi military regime, which is jailing and killing those who dare to speak against them, artists continue to push forward the revolutionary demands of bread freedom and social justice. They continue to confront whichever dictator may be in power at the moment, like a snake with many heads. And these dictators in the military regime fear the artists. They fear their paint and spray cans. They fear their graffiti and their voices which speak truth to power. The military regime fears the depiction of the violence and terror they have unleashed upon the Egyptian people. The dictators attempt to snuff out the truth by painting over walls, jailing and killing and torturing artists, and passing laws that criminalize artistic expression which could be construed in any way as speaking against the dictators and brutality of the regime. In one such recent attempt to silence the voice of the revolution, the Egyptian customs confiscated 400 copies of the book Walls of Freedom. It's a photography book which features Egyptian street art um, for quote unquote instigating revolt. The oppressive voices are right to be scared and not because these artists are terrorists as the regime likes to depict them, but this art moves people. It instills pride, it unmasks the truth, it spires in discussion and analysis, and yes, it also instigates revolt as one of the only sources of truth left in Egypt. The role of women artists and political women collectives is also central to this direct challenge of the regime, even though unfortunately we don't hear enough from these women's voices in the film. And uh, as just one example of the way art is endemic now to deal with social issues in Egypt right now, there's a comic, there's comic displays of, uh, of art uh, dealing with sexual harassment in Cairo metro stations. So the way art has kind of exploded onto the scene to deal with all kinds of social issues um, is one example. As the narrator of the film Ham Hamad Abdus Samad describes when talking about the 2011 uprisings, revolutions are history's engines. Whether revolutions fail or succeed, they always bring long-term change. What happened this year was just the opening scene of a long drama. This long drama was set into motions decades ago through student movements, massive worker strikes in Mahalla, and leftist organizing. Through resistance to Israel's apartheid policies in Palestine and Egypt's complicity, alternatives to neoliberal policies strangling the life out of millions of poor Egyptians, through recognizing the military's destructive role and control over the country's economy, and opposition to ongoing imperialist and colonialist imposition on Egypt's development by US and other Western powers. This long drama plays on as Egyptians continue to fight for freedom and liberation, as an, and as Egyptian artists continue to spray paint, draw, stencil, sing, and dance the truth, the beauty and the pain and loss of the ongoing revolution. As the iconic sunboat and Noah's Ark that features in the film, which are not fixed to the places where they are built, these artists' work are not fixed to the walls on which they are spray painted, but rather are seared into the Egyptian collective imagination, taking Egyptians from the shores of deadly corruption and brutal repression to shores of new life, bringing justice and freedom for all Egyptians. I mean, it's not like it, it was ever legal anyway to begin with. Like, it's always been 
uh, uh, a struggle for sure. Uh, but um, I guess you could say that um, authorities kind of had bigger problems on their hands for a while. Um, and then um, it was recently, um, it was recently basically uh, after CC, President CC was elected uh, and, and, and uh, uh, where, where they, they introduced an anti-graffiti law, uh, which is kind of, to a large extent, similar basically to um, the kind of anti-vandalizing -vandal, uh, uh, laws they have uh, in, 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 in the U.S. or many European countries, um, arguing, of course, that it, 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 it you know, it, it, it's, vandalized, it's vandalizing property, uh, public or private property, and, and, and that's kind of the angle um, they're using. But, um, of course, the motivations are clear uh, why these laws were introduced to begin with. Um, and... Um, and, and, and now the, the authorities are kind of very um, adamant about uh, 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 making sure street artists are, 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 uh, are stopped before, you know, in the process. Uh, we have a military dictator on our hands again. Uh, this military dictator is supported by uh, uh, the, 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 the biggest and most powerful countries in the world, uh, all of whom are uh, exporting military weapons to Egypt, and all of these weapons which are actually used against uh, protesters and have been used since 2011, like it hasn't stopped. Uh, you know, we, 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 we have seen uh, 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 President Obama and Hillary Clinton go off and, and, uh, and commend the Egyptians for their peaceful protesting and their methods. But while they were saying that on television, we were getting hit by tear gas made in Philadelphia. Uh, so, I mean, actions speak a lot louder than words. And to a large extent, the, the results we have today is because of the global uh, powers that are, were at work to uh, uh, to kind of ensure that uh, the old guard stays in power, uh, because all of these guys playing the political game, they know the old guard, and and anything else might be a little risky. So, you know, had ha had there not been a flow of 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 of, of, of billions of dollars from uh, the Gulf states the Arab Gulf states, which are all American allies, and had there not been so many weapons being uh, flowing into the country, perhaps the result might have been different. Um, so for sure, the, 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 the situation today is incredibly, very, very bad, uh, and, and the level of authoritarianism is something that I, uh, I don't think we've ever experienced in Egypt before. The current regime, uh, doesn't know how to solve any of these problems and is completely incapable of doing so. Uh, so the problems won't go away, and if the problems won't go away, then um, I, I don't think um, I don't think people will be able to take it forever. Uh, so so I so I don't think we've seen the last of 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 the situ of the situation in Egypt yet. Um, I mean, and also, like on a brighter note, I mean, in in in, in um, you know, Egypt has been around for a very long time. Right? You know, it's thousands of years, right? And and I mean, if you even if you go look back at like ancient Egypt only, it's like you know, between the Middle Kingdom and the Late Kingdom, you you, you would find like five hundred years of 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 very little information you know, chaos, famine, revolutions, and protests, and we, we don't know how that transition necessarily happened. So, you know, it's been like, what, four years now? <laughs> so, in the larger scheme of things, I think 
uh, a four year struggle so far is not really so bad. Prior to, to uh, the military practically kidnapping uh, uh, the, the, the Muslim Brotherhood president, Morsi, before him, and, and, and doing that, uh, you know, we, were, we had a strategy. We were going out and gathering signatures of people, um, so many signatures that, that, that um, could have been used in a legal capacity to uh, de-seat the president. Uh, and then and then have like a proper uh, legal procedure for elections and so on. However, uh, by um, only using these signatures as an excuse for the military to intervene by force and by weapons and by murdering at least fifteen hundred people in a in a what was a, 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 a peaceful sitting. We have to admit it was a peaceful sit, sit in even though it lasted for a long time and it was annoying by the Brotherhood supporters, it was a peaceful one. And, um, and by that, that violent intervention and putting aside any rule of law, then of course the result will be more violence, which is now what we're seeing from Brotherhood supporters in Sinai, um, and a complete disregard for the rule of law because there was, there was no rule of law in the first place. So I'm, I'm of the opinion of if, if the signatures were used for a legal procedure, for rule of law to take hold, um, then I think uh, we wouldn't see the situation we're now in, which is people only needing to resort to violence. You resort to violence only if, if you know that there is no law and there is no justice. And that's the situation we're in now. And of course... It only served the popularity of Sisi to become president because, um, of course, before kidnapping the president and kind of staging a coup, no one really knew very much about Sisi to begin with. It's not like he was a very popular person. So if he had run during elections then, he would not have won, of course. Um, so um, I, I think definitely um, if we had taken the legal process, and we were, we were capable of it because we had millions of signatures uh, that could have been used to deceit the president, um, I think the result now would have been a lot better, but would not have been in the interest of uh, the military apparatus in Egypt. No, nowadays I don't think you would find much. Um, yeah, I mean, this, this film is like, um, I think it, it, it uh, was made, uh, f they finished filming maybe sometime around 2000, uh, 2013, and already towards the end of the film, I mean, things were getting very difficult for street artists, like you really, it was, it, it's, a, it's, a, it's a very big shift in a way where like you go from I mean, in, in, in early 2011, there was almost little to no street art. And then by the end of 2011, there was just like an explosion. There was just like so much of it all the time. And it was hard to keep up. And, and then now you're back to like there being almost no new street art to speak of. Well, I always make it a point to say that I'm not a street artist at all. Um, I'm an artist, I'm, I'm, and, and as an artist, I mean, for me, honestly, it's no, whether I paint on a, a wall or paint on a piece of paper or canvas, it's the same thing, it's just a drawing, I could draw on anything, it doesn't matter, right? In Cairo, at that time, between uh, 2011 and um, until I, I, I left, basically, um, the... There was the, the motivation to paint was very, very, to, the motivation to paint on the street and paint those particular things was, was very present and it was very urgent. There was an urgency in painting uh, and going out and doing it on the street in particular. I mean, it was what felt like the necessary thing to do, especially, especially in 2011, like in, in early 2011 on 
January 25th, there was no street art, really, at all. Um, so there was a need for it to, to exist at that moment in time. Um, uh, I, don't, I don't necessarily have the urgency now to go out in the middle of the night and do shit in Los Angeles, California. You know, it, it, it would be, it, 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 it wouldn't be as urgent or purposeful as it was uh, in Cairo at the time. So what I'm doing now is not street art at all. Um, I, I'm, I'm, doing a, uh, I'm doing a comic book, actually. I'm doing a graphic novel. Uh, and uh, I, only, I, I only ever do street art when I'm invited as part of a festival or something, like a, a mural painting festival. And in that case, I, I still try and make it something that is meaningful and, and, and relevant to the place and time where, where it's being painted. On one day, people woke up, and then all of a sudden, the entire wall was whitewashed. It was all painted this plain beige color. So all the drawings were gone, and the drawings at the time were all, to a large extent, not all of them, but a, a vast majority were like the portraits of the martyrs. And um, it sort of became almost like a shrine, like a visiting place, more important than where these people were actually buried. Uh, you know, people would go visit the wall instead, and they would leave flowers at the wall, and it, it kind of became this amazing thing. Um, and um, uh, so, when when the all of the wall was was painted beige, and they had like several large uh, riot police trucks parked in front of the wall to sort of protect it from someone coming and painting again. Um, on that same day, in the afternoon, something like 2,000 people showed up to the wall and just started like really fucking it up, like just painting slogans against the Brotherhood and against the President uh, Morsi uh, because thinking that he was responsible for these orders to paint the wall. Um, and I think um, on that same 2,000 people just painted, and so the police were overwhelmed, and so they left, um, and they continued to paint. Uh, this continued to go on for many weeks, but on that day, on that same evening, the president made an address, and, 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 and a public address saying, leave, those, leave the graffiti kids alone, let them paint whatever they want, and so... I think that was kind of a clue as to the, like the relevance of graffiti at the time, and um, to the point where like the president would have to make a public address to like just let the graffiti kids paint on that wall if they want to. I mean, I don't think that's ever happened before. I think the art scene in Egypt even without the street art, without any of that stuff, it's still very much, uh, um, it's still very much loaded, you know, it's still very much, it's not, it's not pointless like a lot of the street art, like a lot of, sorry, a lot of the contemporary art you see in other places around the world. It's, it's, it's very, it's, it's very loaded and it, 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 it usually when a, when an artist any kind of artist makes something in Egypt. It, it does, I think, for the most part, come out of a, 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 this burning need, like a necessity in a way, even if it's going to be shown in a very small little gallery space. <laughs> <laughs>